Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. We're on City TV tonight. We're talking to an MPP presidential hopeful, immediate past minister for Agric. He gave a lecture on the economy on Monday, the 13th of March, and he is making a case for building an economy based on agriculture. He's been minister for Agric for six years, and he says he believes he can translate what he thinks he has done in agriculture to the whole country. He will explain his position to us as we look at the next one hour. Dr. Ousu Ifri Akoto is my guest. We'll be right back to speak to the man in the flesh, live. Send your questions on our WhatsApp number on the screen. In fact, we'll probably take some of your comments for him. What do you make of his flag bearership? What do you make of the agri sector? What are his chances against some of the other people whose names have come up? All of that and more when we come back. Stay with us. your own business takes time, passion, and hard work. It takes commitment and perseverance in the face of challenges. As an entrepreneur, I look for value. How to get more for less? That is what Vodafone Too Much Business gives. Too much data, minutes for calls, SMS bundles, and my favorite part is too much flexibility to customize your mobile plan. Get more value for your business. Sign on to Vodafone Too Much Business, a cost-efficient mobile offer that allows you to choose and customize how much data, voice, or SMS allocations your business needs. Send stats to 050-777-9000 or email vodafonebusiness.gh at vodafone.com. Whatever your business needs are, Vodafone Too Much Business has a solution for you. So welcome back. So tonight my guest is Dr. Usu Efri Akoto, former MP for Kwada, so former minister for Agric. I'm not sure if you call him an aspirant yet. It's better to call you a hopeful, right? Because the race is not yet, I see. So you resigned uh, in January. And what have you been up to since? I've been resting. Oh, is it that tiring? <laughs> <laughs> to, to work for six continuous years, no break. Wow. No holiday. Gosh. And jumping up and down in villages and farms and air condition offices and mm. all of that. Wow. It takes a toll. And you are jumping from frying pan to fire. Well, <laughs> <laughs> because from <laughs> Minister of Agric is one thing. President is a whole new ball game. Absolutely, I know. I know the kind of punishing schedule he's under. So I'm wow. very familiar with that. So let's deal with the elephant in the room <laughs> for, for uh, forgiving the pun. So why do you want to be president? I want to be president for all kinds of reasons. The accumulated knowledge and experience mm. that I have gone through in Ghana here, beyond Ghana, mm. putting it all together. I have great faith in the farmer of this country. And my experience in the six years dealing with farmers, and don't forget every year, all the 16 regions, except 2020 when the COVID didn't allow travel. So I'm very familiar with the fields and the, the feelings. the kind of assistance that was given, the support given to them through subsidies of seed and fertilizer to improve their yields, to improve their efficiency, and to increase their incomes and all of that. The creation of institutions to support what we are doing, mm. to ensure that it's, uh, the policies are, are, are implemented properly. That's putting all this together, the conclusion is that we need to emphasize agriculture in terms of public resource allocation to the extent that has never been done before mm. in order to get us out of this rut that we find ourselves in. And that is the potential that this country have in terms of agriculture. We've tried all kinds of things. Mining, we've been mining gold for over 100 years, manganese, whatever. 
and then in, uh, during his uh, 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 regime, we, we discovered oil, and we put all our hopes that oil is going to get us out of this. Mm. Now we see, we know where that has ended, ended us. Gold, the last few years we become the the biggest producer of gold, or the second biggest after South Africa, mm -hmm. and yet we are in this crisis. We are in the clutches of the IMF, and I'm saying that with all these natural resource exploitations, we are still where we are. Agriculture, as far as I can see it, is the only hope to be able to generate the kind of resources, both ex uh, export earnings and local uh, revenues, to fund our development in a sustainable matter, a manner, without having to rely on debts every year to fund our, 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 our So you want to be president because you believe you have experience in agriculture to transform Ghana? Is that how I should Well, not, not, not experience in agriculture alone. I mean, I've been a member of parliament, and in parliament, you know, you, it's not just one area that you deal with, the whole areas, because you have three or four uh, uh, select committees that you, you serve on and all of that. But I'm saying that to get, it's a cash flow problem. Ghana is, the economy is not earning enough to fund our development. And therefore, we're always having to go and borrow to fund our development. And any time you go on borrowing, we fall down, like we have done now mm -hmm. in the countries of IMF. That cycle has gone on for 17 times in the 66 years of this uh, uh, nation. We can't go on like that. We need a radically different approach. And I'm saying that that approach is just lying there under our feet. And yet we haven't supported it the extent that we'll be able to generate the resources to finance the rest of, our, of the economy, both the industrial development mm. and the social, as education uh, and, 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 and uh, health, mm. infrastructure, all those that we require to develop as a nation. And I think that looking back on my six years, there's a key which will open the door for us to have sustainable development. The president to be able to take charge and make sure that this happens, that this vision that I'm, I'm mm. propounding happens in Ghana. And I'm very confident that within the medium term, that can be is very achievable. Because look at Ivory Coast. Five commodities, coffee, cocoa, cashew, rubber, oil palm. It gives them seven, eight billion dollars every year. The same in Ghana gives us less than two billion. And yet we have far more endowment than Cote d'Ivoire. But you've had how many years? Six years to yeah, prove, six to years prove of, this. Uh, six years. Six had, years to change this. No, not to change it. To lay the foundation. If six years I put um, uh, um, a seedling of rubber in the ground, by now I'm beginning to tap. So it's, a, it's not a simple six thing. Six years is too short. Yeah, yeah. You but, need for a, but President, the, you have only four years. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, this is why the institutions to develop these things should be anchored in law. So the Tree Crop Development Authority is a law I piloted through my... ...2019. the president inaugurated the body itself of the board mm. and the management with headquarters in Kumase. So this is the first time since 1947 that any commodity authority body has been after COCO, 1947 COCO Act. Since then, there has not been any. This is the first time we've so If I get you right, you've had six years to lay a foundation. Yes. That you believe if you became president. I can build on very quickly to make, bring about sustainable 
uh, sources of funding for the rest of the development. But the, the problem is that the foundation that Ghanaians look for is not just the agri sector. And we have not, we'll get into the agri sector, but the current situation of the country, look, various economists have said various things, and you know this, you're an economist, that we are facing probably the worst economic crisis since 1983. Okay. Right? Yes. Inflation is yeah. in the mid 50s, worse yeah. since 1999. Right. Interest rates, highest since 2003. I'm, a, I'm very much almost agree. all the economic indicators yes. are struggling yes. so how do you convince me that you've laid a foundation Ghanaians are looking for an overall economy so even let's yeah, maybe let's even assume let's even assume i'll come to agree let's even assume that agri is as good as you say it yes. is where we are today there's no real foundation is there yeah yeah but, but this is what i'm saying the institutional foundation has been laid really it, of course i mean there, there was never this issue about an organization which is given responsibility from research all the way to marketing, mm. quality control and all that. All the things that Cocoa Board has been doing. Cocoa Board as an institution since 1947 has served this country very well. You cannot argue with that. What we are doing is that these other tree crops should also be managed in the same way. So now just like the act in 1947 cocoa, we are saying that there's an act for six crops that have been selected. And these six crops have the potential to really give us the kind of resources that we need after a certain period of implementation. But I get that. I'm saying that the, the economy has been badly managed. The economy is in a bad place. Well, the, so if you, if you say you've laid a the economy is in a difficult situation. So, so what? So, so, that's, not, so that's not a foundation. Well, a no. foundation has to be steady for you to build something no, on no, it. No, no, but where it, it didn't, where there was nothing, now we put something in place. Was there nothing? Of course, there, there was no tree crop development authority. But why do you keep talking about tree crop? No, 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 wait a minute. We had an economy. No, no, please. In management science, one of the most important le uh, uh, lessons you learn is prioritizing. You the which matters. If you want to spend a thousand cities spread equally around, mm -hmm. you are not going to get any effect. If you are identifying one source which ultimately will give you mm. the revenue for you to be able to finance the others, mm. then that is the, the way to go. And that's precisely what I'm, I'm suggesting. Well, my, my, I, I'm trying to understand the, the relationship between the tree crop thing you're talking about mm -hmm. and the MPP's record. Because if you become flag bearer for the MPP, yes. you will campaign on the record of this government. Yes. And I'm saying to you that this government's record is not good. Well, I mean, that is, um, we all know we are in an economic crisis. We have to find a solution out of the crisis. The solution that I'm propounding is what I'm saying to you. That the Akufuado government has laid the foundation for an, uh, a, a, a revival or a, a growth in specific commodities which will be used to fund the future development of industry uh, and, and the other sectors but of the economy. The, I mean, I, and I'm saying I, I, I dispute that because this we have people who's, whose savings with banks have been abrogated in haircuts. They've been taken by the government. Mm -hmm. We have banks that have collapsed. Mm -hmm. The currency, according to Bloomberg, from October 2022 was the worst performing in the world. Yes. Exchange rates are through the roof. Mm -hmm. This government has borrowed three times Muhammad's government, right. 12 times Akufo's uh, 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 government. So yes. this is not, this is yeah, not yeah, the foundation. But, yeah, yeah, but, it's not but, foundation for no, anything. No, but, but it's foundation for something. You may not believe it. I'm speaking I'm to saying, facts. No, no. I'm just yeah, pointing no, no, to you. No, no, I'm numbers. saying that if you have a certain amount of revenue, no matter how small, you can still prioritize within it. We are, we are still getting revenue. We are spending on, on uh, uh, interest rates and, and the borrowed funds that we have done in the past. And we are, we are, broke. We are looking for $3 billion from the IMF. Yes, yes, we exactly. The, so what I'm saying is that whatever money we have within that, we should be able to prioritize to give agriculture an advantage. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm coming back to the box. Wouldn't it have been better for you as one of the president's most trusted confidants, managing one of his most important sectors, 
to stay and help him through this very difficult time for his legacy instead of resigning at a time like this to, to, to pursue this president. Yes, but you know, we are going against, we are going in accordance with the party's rules and regulations. President Kufu is his second term. Constitutionally, he cannot run again. So we have to look ahead and make the preparation to ensure Force administration day, including the NHIS. And I used to stand on the floor of parliament criticizing them for what they are doing. And not only that, that bringing down agriculture to the level that the growth rate was less than 2%. And all of that. We have those records. With what the Kufuado has been able to achieve, is we are talking through a cash flow uh, problem. Yeah, but whatever it is. And my question is, don't you think it's better to help him to, <laughs> to recover that? Uh, how? The, all the things you say you've done in a great. No, but... but you, you, can, you can use yeah. your wisdom there to help. Because they're, they're but, kind of... But, they're, but that, is, that is there. It's, it's a foundation. The record is it's, there. It's, no, but that, that's just it's history. No, We're talking not, about where we are now. It's not, it's not history. It's not history. Please. Don't what discard. Do don't discard. Let's, let, let's talk about outputs. We're talking mm -hmm. about inflation. We're talking about people's incomes eroding. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people losing their monies. Yes. So if you say the record is there, mm -hmm. if the record ask, for agriculture is there. So I'm we should saying, separate agriculture from the barrel performance of the Akuba well, government? No, no. What I'm saying is I'm, that's my portfolio. That's where my knowledge is best compared to the other areas because I was the manager. And I'm saying to you that if with the institutions that have been created now. It's not just Tree Crop Development Authority. We have the Grains Development Authority in Parliament now, and hopefully before they rise for the summer, it should be passed for us to set up this organization, all modeled on the Cocoa, Cocoa Board, be responsible for research in the universities and, and the science laboratories, all the mm. way to exports and so on, and, 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 and manage it provide a minimum prices, guaranteed prices for farmers of these products, uh, and all of that. So if we are able to put all these in place, we have the great development, we have two other authorities that are in the pipeline, which is the Horticultural Development Authority and the Poultry Development Authority. With these plus an additional uh, legislation which would enable the, uh, the, the banks to, to lend to agriculture. At the moment, agriculture lending, out of the total lending by our banks, is only 3.2%. And if you interrogate that, more than half of that is for LBCs, the local buying agency, for cocoa buying. So there's virtually things we are putting in place to make sure that we are in a strong place to exploit agriculture to the health, combined with the farmers and the Fair willingness of the farmers. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused because even your, the, the agri sector that is the basis for your sort of your campaign, mm -hmm. the record is checkered at best. Which, which, is, which is checkered. I mean, I, you just, well, you just, you just told, told me about lending to agriculture. Yes. Right? It's a very important metric. Yeah, but, if, but you, it's not if, you run, if you run a portfolio for six years mm -hmm. and lending to agree is the percent you spoke about, yes, you have But, but I don't have sector. control over the credit. I mean, you have to give it to me. It's the banks who decide who, who what to give. It's based on the risk portfolio of the, no. of the sector. Well, well, that's the So, one of the things you do is you de risk yeah. the sector. Yeah, yeah. So, how do I de risk the se sector? You set up things like Gersel and make sure they work. They well, work, but, they work but, work. but there's Gersel. But Gersel doesn't solve the problem. It's now you're trying to, are no. trying to you it come up with the law to sort of compel banks to lend to the sector. Yes. Is and that the India, way to solve the problem? Well, yes, India did it. They succeeded. Morocco did it. They succeeded. I mean, how do you persuade the banks to do it? These banks who have lost money, they saved the government. Government is not paying them, well, not giving them haircuts. But, but you if, think you can force them to lend to well, farmers? I mean, they, they, if the law is there, they have to. You can't and force somebody to lend money they don't have. No, no, no. But the, the point I'm making to you is that problems yeah uh, yeah yeah but I'm looking at medium long term if you look at the situation today you won't do anything oh well, we, we can, don't have we the money really oh we are doing we this can really we are assess you based on what you've done yeah yeah exactly. we can't assess you based on your plan
No, no, but and I'm saying that even the sector that is the basis of your campaign, mm -hmm. the record isn't necessarily stellar. Well, for me, it's stellar. If you have a rate of growth of agriculture at 8.4% in 2021, which is the highest rate of growth of the agricultural sector in this republic, it is stellar. But it came down to 4 point something. Well, well, and it's well, been, I mean, it's, it's, it moves and goes. You can yeah, show for the it yeah, goes yeah, and but, it, but it's the trend that you look at. In agriculture, you can't use one year to say that everything is bad. So why are you using 2021? No, but because I'm coming. I'm saying that we were, where we are coming from to 2021 is a zigzag. But so long as the trend is up, you are in a good place. Yeah, we, we have the map. So, yeah. I mean, we have the trend. It's yes. not, so, so because you grew in 2021, it means... Sorry? I mean, 2021 was 8.4% yes. growth 20, rate. 2020, 2020 in the eye of the COVID was 7.4%. Do you know the target of AU? AU target for every member country is 6% growth in agriculture. So if you are going above that, you are in a very good place. So you cannot just dismiss these very stellar performances. So what happened in 2022 then? Well, I don't know. I, I, I think there's a preliminary. I don't have the figures. That, that is less than the 8.4. But um, we are waiting for the government's decision. What, what if people say, yes, growth rates is great, but food prices are high. In, in fact, our, food our, our high well. levels of inflation, according to statistical services, were predominantly driven by food inflation. Yes, but I mean, if you say food prices, food prices not in the rural areas, because food prices in the rural areas are not as high as in That's the That's not true. The basket of inflation is the whole country. Yes. In fact, the region with the highest inflation is mm. Eastern region, yes. which has more rural than even urban. Well, so if you look at the inflation basket... Uh, Food. So if food inflation is yes. driving inflation of yes. close to 60%. Going down. Inflation has been going up since last year, yeah. January. Yes. So what about the... Which is the year growth? after you had your highest growth of agri... Yes. So you're, you're saying agri grew in 8.4, 2021. I give you that. Yes. But right after that, mm -hmm. food prices skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah, but we know what, what happened. I mean... What happened? A, a lot of uh, imports, a, a substantial part of our consumption is imported food. And that is an area that has become very controversial. Why is it that agriculture is growing and that we are still relying on food? Whether that situation is getting better or worse. So long as local production goes up, the rate may not be at the rate where uh, to match imports for you to say that you are no longer going to uh, uh, import. But in due course, if we do the right thing, the same thing, the rate of growth will go up, and then we'll come to that level. Rice, for instance, has doubled in production. Nobody since talks about Rice has been growing steadily since 2020. I can show no. you a chart. Yes. So, sorry, actually, since two, in fact. Well, from some, 20, let, let, I, let, No, 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 we have it. Yes. The FAO has put out figures on No, but rice. why don't you call the Ghana Statistical no, Service? I, 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 why do you call the FAO? Okay, fine. Let, 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 FAO takes their statistics wonderful. from the Ghana Statistical Service. Rice production has mm. been growing steadily since the year 2000. Yes. Rice but, has doubled from 2008 to 2020. Yes. That, if I have the chart, I'll show you. Yes. So, Yes, a PFJ did some good things, but if you look at, for, in fact, from 1999, mm -hmm. the rice graph has gone up all the way to 2020. Yes, but it's the rate that we are talking about. I'm, I'm interested in the time. The curve is steepest between 2012. I can show you. You can, you can mm -hmm. check this out. This is, the curve is steeper from 2012 to 2020. It's a long time series. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is rice, trend mm -hmm. of rice production in Ghana yield between 1990 and 2018. Right. This is enough information. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. From 1990, the orange line. Yes. Look at rice, all yes. the way to 2018. Yes. So, and if you can, if you carry on, you are going to go up. So it's a so, positive so, trend. So, so what I'm saying is that the rate at which it's going is not enough to cover the rate of consumption because of urbanization and all those things. So we need to double the rate. But I'm saying you can't arrogate the rice performance to your performance alone. This yeah, is the yeah, trend. But, but I'm saying that if you were to cut off from 2017. Uh -huh. to 2021, uh -huh. you will see that the, the, the rate is much higher than before. And, because and, and of plants of food and jobs. Oh, of course. Because we know the amount of seeds that we've given to the farmers, the amount of fertilizer that we use for, for mm. the rice farmers, and, all, and you cannot tell me that these don't have any effect. The monitoring that we've done, the yields are going up, 
in accordance with these things. So there is some uh, movement. But you, you, make some, you make some fantastic claims in your speech yesterday yes. mm -hmm. on page 7 of the speech, I think. You said that because of the, the stellar performance of, in food production, mm -hmm. page 8, Ghana is now the breadbasket of West Africa. And that's true. I, how is that possible? Well, if it's not true, why would we make a law which says that you cannot export grains from Ghana? That's just soya grains. No, no, yeah. no, no. No. You yeah. asked me a question. Yes. I want to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I'm saying yeah. that uh, you are aware that there's a, a law in place yeah. which says that we cannot export grains across uh, land borders. Maybe because the no, no, no. I'm saying, are you aware? I, I know that you are aware. Yeah, but I'm saying, so how, why, why would that be the case? Because it's possible that people offer better prices outside. Maybe people could smuggle outside. No, but if they, if they had. They, 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 you could see the crisscrossing of number plates of tracks from as far as Nigeria, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Togo, all over the place, all the way to Ejura, coming to take our stocks away. And the of, reason of what product? Of, of the grains. Really? Yeah. I have data on grains for 2022. I could mm -hmm. show you the production of maize mm -hmm. and rice. Mm -hmm. Unless you're looking at per capita. 2022. Ghana, yes, Ghana is not necessarily the highest producer. In fact, if no, it, I'm not saying it's the highest yes, producer. And I want to oh, show oh, you. Yeah. Be, be, not, no, if I'm, you're talking about imports, let's mm -hmm. take it one by one. We import 90% of our tomato imports from Burkina Faso. Yes. Does that make Burkina Faso the breadbasket of West Africa? No, no, no. Now but, look at this. This but, is from U.S. Ministry of Agri. Uh -huh. This is production in 2022 uh -huh. of rice. Mm -hmm. Right? Nigeria, if, five, I mean, five million. Imports. No, production. Uh huh. Nigeria, 5 million. Yes. Mali, 1.7. Mm -hmm. Cote d'Ivoire, 1.1. Senegal, 9. Which, which so, year is this? 2022. Ghana mm -hmm. is number 5. 638. Yes. It cannot be. In 2022. No, 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 I'm saying. It, well, it this, is, this is U.S. Ministry of Food no, and Agriculture. No, no, but you have, That's to quote, my, you have to quote yes. the Ministry of, Ghana's Ministry of Agriculture. Well, at the time this was captured, you know, you're, you're an economist. Yes. If you capture data, if this is August 2022, mm -hmm. it's for all of them the same time. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is that the Ghana figure is wrong. It's not so what's the Ghana eight. figure? The Ghana figure, we, uh, you're saying is 2020, 2022. 2022, right. No, no, 2021, Ghana's total production of 1.2 million. What about 2022? 2022, I don't have the figure. But that, that, I'm, before, I'm, I'm telling you, no, 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 but it cannot be half of what it was. The previous Why can't time. it be? Cocoa, no. cocoa, the in, 20, cocoa in 2022 yes. was about half of what it was in 2021. Yeah, yeah no, but that's, so that's why a are you saying rice no, can't that, be the same? That because the acreages that the farmers uh, uh, planted were not any half of that, and we didn't have any drought fantastic for production to collapse to half. It cannot be. So, if so, I will challenge, so I will challenge your figures. Well, this is from this is from the U.S. Yeah, I'm saying trade. that I will. But even if it's, <laughs> even if that is, my point is that we are nowhere near in the lead in these two most no, important. No, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying we are in the lead. Yeah. In terms of production. You said we're not, a bread basket. No, no. Yeah, but but bread basket. What does it mean? Yeah, it means that we are producing more than we can we, are, we can consume. So the marketable. We're talking about the marketable but aspect. Is that true? Yeah. Is the marketable part of we it? We only that, produce forty percent of yeah, the rice we eat in Ghana. Yeah, but, you, but our poultry farmers don't have enough maize for their farm. Yes. How can you say that we are producing more no, rice? But rice is not for for poultry. Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, about but for those two products. No, no, but we are talking about maize and maize as mm -hmm. the two because under PFJ, mm -hmm. the two products that had the most increase. Mm -hmm was rice and maize. We admit that. Mm -hmm. Rice and, and maize. And so, yeah. Yes. And rice. So, yeah. In fact, if you look at it, we have figures on the increase in yield. And I'll mm -hmm. give that to you. Mm -hmm. Maize, almost 18.9% per annum increase from previous year. Rice, 10.2%. Mm -hmm. Sogum, 14.7%. Mm -hmm. So you have 10.5%. They grew than more than, all grew at more than 10% per year because of PFG. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that when you compare that good record locally to other West African countries. No, but that, they are not that stellar. No, no, but that doesn't make them uh, food self sufficient. The fact that they are they they are growing at a certain level doesn't make them food self sufficient. Nigeria is the biggest importer of rice in, in the second biggest yeah. in the world. So, and and what does it mean here? 
so, all the so countries all on this list, apart from Nigeria, have a yes. lower population than Ghana. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's and yet they are producing more than. But, but that's not the, the point. The point is that whether our production is in terms of our local consumption yeah. exceeds production or, or not. That's that's what you should be looking at. Going to bring figures from America when we have our own we have our own statisticians. Well, there are six countries. Compile. There are no, six no, countries. No. Yeah, 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 let me there. let me make the point. Yeah. Because you are, you are talking about half of the production of Ghana here. What about and I'm saying it's wrong. I haven't seen maize. Maize is there. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. So don't let's get into the nitpick of things. Has been substantial growth in cereal production in this country under the planting for food and jobs. We know the amount of uh, improved seeds that we've given to the farmers, amount of fertilizer we've given to the farmers, how much subsidy is cost the government in terms of output, what has been produced at the farm grade price, the value of the production from the distribution of this input. Right. So that is what we should be looking at. We're going to bring uh, okay. American and foreign <laughs> statistics. Yeah, of course. You are saying it's USA. Yeah, it's I, I, for, for every data I give you, I tell you where I take it from. Yeah, yeah. But you did say this is from yeah, America. This, yeah, this is. So I'm correct. Yeah. So, so if I'm saying America, yeah. you are saying you are denying it. Yeah, it's I'm not. not. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We're trying to assess the, the performance because, of course, the whole base of this interview is there. Uh, almost 45 minute speech, 16 pages, and I must say it was quite detailed on the agricultural sector. And he essentially is saying that based on his performance in agriculture, he can transform the economy of Ghana because we've been mining for many years. A lot of things we've been doing. Agri employs the most people. It has a multiplier effect. Use that to transform the country. We'll talk about the NPP and where they are. For that, the is even campaigning going. No, stay with us. Point of view, be right back. We give you extra so you can go further. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Pepsodent introduces Chaco and Lemon Essence. A unique combination of natural essences. Whitens teeth naturally for you and family because every smile matters. New Pepsodent Herbal. Introducing a unique combination of herbal extracts in an antibacterial toothpaste for strong teeth and healthy gums that protects your family and you. Every smile matters. Welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Owusu Efriya Kutu, flag by over of the MPP, former minister of Agric. He's very convinced that the Agric sector 
as what it takes to transform the economy. Would you say that the farmers of Ghana would be your greatest supporters in the sense that they would have been the ones to benefit most from your performance? So is it reasonable to expect that they would be your they will be in your corner in this in this conversation about presidency? Well, we are, we are talking politics. Yes. But you can't translate technicalities into politics. Mm. The, 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 the policies of planting for food and jobs have benefited 1.7 million farmers as of a total farmer population. Yes, it's obvious when you go out there, the comments that they make to you, and I say I travel around a lot. They are very appreciative of the opportunities the government has given to them to better their lot. But to say that because they are benefiting from government policy to translate into political benefit is a you know, huge jump. No, Do you worry when some of the farmer groups criticize your, your approach to the sector? Well, For example, group, Gau, uh, Peasant Farmers Association, and some of these boys. For example, I, uh, when the artwork for this show was put out, the peasant farmers sort of put it on their platform. And sorry, a number of them were question, had a lot of questions for you. My, my point is, you would expect that if the kinds of things you've done in a Greek, and we've admitted some of them, you would expect that these immediate stakeholders of yours would, would be a bit more, how shall I say, they would be more receptive of your message. But it seems as if even when I put the artwork there, there's a lot of questions still for you, even from farmers. 3.1 million farmers. Okay? Ghana doesn't have a union of farmers. Mm. So there are all these little splinter groups representing sections of farmers. You can't use what they say mm. to represent the view of all farmers. Because when I go out in the field, mm -hmm. what I hear is contrary to what you are reporting to me. Okay. S so, the... <laughs> well, for me, I, I feel like the people like, people like peasant farmers should be... They should understand what you are trying to do. And they should be in your, on, in your corner. Well, that's their business. Well, what I'm saying is there are 3.1 million farmers according to the agricultural census that I conducted in 2018, the first in 38 years. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. That was mm -hmm. COVID yeah. 2020. Nobody could travel. So what I hear from the farmers when I go in the field is not what you are telling me. And I believe that mm. those that I meet and encounter in the field and their traditional rulers and so on, I believe them because directly they are talking to me. One of the most important policies you brought, I remember the first time I heard you properly on radio, Richard Sky interviewed you on CTFM. At the time you were the ranking member on Greek, and you, you said that Coco should not be under Ministry of Finance, should be under Ministry of Greek. And you MPP put it in their manifesto and you did bring it into a Greek. One of the reasons you gave in that interview was that we had taken our eye off production and that we were focusing on the loan and all those other things and that the core of cocoa was production. Would you say that in the six years you've been vindicated, if we look at the production figures in the past 10 no, years? I was, I was talking about international practice. There's nowhere in the world. Mm. And believe me, because I've been traveling around the world for 18 years working for in the international uh, uh, system, mm. that a commodity is at the Ministry of Finance. What is a commodity doing at the Ministry of Finance? What is it doing there? Mm. You, are, you are interested in collecting the monies that comes from proceeds of, of exports. So what is it doing there? Who is the agronomist there? That was the way, uh, that was my argument. And I'm right and right and right and right. Nowhere, nowhere. You go to Brazil or you go to Australia or you go to in, in anywhere. Well, that 
business has been the syndicated loan. No, to no, pay no, the no, 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 no. That was a political come. thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, Champon came mm. in here, so mm. no loans were given to him. All he had was cocoa, so he created the Ministry of Cocoa Affairs, which eventually landed at the, at the um, castle as uh, part of the uh, brief. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when he was off and so on, ended at the Ministry of Finance. But there's no way in this world, South America, in Africa here, Cote d'Ivoire, our neighbors, that a commodity is with the Ministry of Finance. It was, it was an oddity. Fair enough. You've corrected that number, but my question is that has the policy decision of bringing it under a great the fortune of the sector? There are two okay. you have can, to can we can we can we look at cocoa output as a, a consequence of your leadership in the agri sector that's my question the cocoa output yes so the production the metric tonnage of cocoa that we cocoa, produce is that uh, something cocoa, we can blame you or uh, congratulate you for if no no because cocoa production has almost been stagnant yeah. and and for a good reason the disease the virus Swollen shoot mm -hmm. set in about 11 years. Mm. It's only when we came that through the Agric uh, uh, African Development Bank, we have managed to get this loan for the rehabilitation to control uh, the, the virus. And that was in, uh, only in 2020. That, that project started. So the mm. project is in its third year of impl implementation to control the virus. So that has been weighing down on production. That's what it is. I hope you are listening. I'm following you, but the, 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 cocoa, the cocoa production for 2022 was rather very bad. Yeah. Should these are all the impact. These are all the impacts of the swollen shoot. And is it, mean, only, is it only a Ghana situation? Well, I mean, part of it went into Cote d'Ivoire, but the Arborians took measures when it should have been taken. Unlike Ghana, where we made it fester to the extent that uh, Western North, which used to produce something like 300,000 metric tons. Habilitation project is now underway to take out because it's the like COVID. Yeah, but who, who should be blamed for this? Well, I'm saying that the NDC government should have taken the measures when the incident started. But this is 20, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. That, this is what I'm saying that we are taking measures to correct what should have been done 10 years back. But if you look at cocoa production in 2021, mm -hmm. it was over 1 million tons and the 22 yes. came down. That, that's to a 600,000. Yes, yes. And I'm saying that our production reduced by over 50%. Ivory Coast lost probably about 10%. Yes. So, and the two of you have been working together. So my, my no, point no, is that... No, 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 we haven't been working together because no. the incidents here in no. Ghana was far, far I'm extensive than together Cote d'Ivoire. On, on the living income differential. Yeah, that's a different your issue. Your participation, your, 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 which is commendable. I am trying to say to you that the lower output in cocoa production should be blamed at your doorstep. No, I'm trying to explain to you that the, 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 the disease, the swollen shoot disease, if you know the history of it, started in 2008, 2009. And the Mahama administration should have taken in measures immediately because it spreads. And once it starts spreading, you can't spray you against it. For six years? No, no. This and one, in 2021, you had a very high no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying, that we have, we have this loan from the African Development Bank to rehabilitate the cocoa uh, industry. And that started in 2020. So we are in the third year of implementation. It's a five-year program. So what it you do is you take out the whole tree and you plant a new seedling. Seedlings uh, take three, four years to come into harvest. Previously, it was seven years or something. You have a new uh, uh, hybrid 
which yields within three three years. So we are a, we are in a transition period of uh, sorting out what should have been sorted out many years back. Let us we decide. We'll, we'll come no, back and look at the MPP itself because I feel like we need to talk about that party's primaries, dates, chances, and all of that. We've spent a lot of time talking about Greek, which of course is the basis for the interview. We're talking to Dr. Fri Akuto, former minister for Greek, flag rabble full. Stay with us. City is building bamboo bicycles to help children get to school. that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidate yeah! funds, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anywhere and win. Flip it or own it. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Ouse Friyako. To spend his whole life, apart from his work in the international coffee organization and private sector in public service 2009 to 2023 two terms mp two terms or one and a half terms minister <laughs> for agri because he, he, he left a, a couple of points it seems to me as if a lot of the your contenders are campaigning you you resigned in 20 uh, january but this is the first major event you've done is there a reason for this Yes, there is a reason. Let me explain. You see, the party has regulations. And I am the last person to break that regulation, which says that until the party leaves the, uh, sets the date and invites uh, contestants, potential, to come and pick forms and so on and so forth, there should be no campaigning. Mm. This has been grossly been overlooked by a lot of people. I wasn't going to stampede into that. But it doesn't mean that I'm not working. This is not a general election. Mm -hmm. So appealing to the nation and so on. What I did with this public lecture, I went to the youth to share my vision for the future if I become president. That's why I went to the university there, where the students were there. Some party folks came, of course, they heard that I was speaking. They, they, and uh, we actually also put it out live uh, for yeah, television series, including yeah. yours, to give it the widest coverage about my vision. And the vision that I shared with the students that day has been very well received, in fact, well beyond what I expected. I mean, all over, internationally, uh, in Ghana, everywhere. Uh, 
uh, to the extent that I'm beginning even to get invitation to come and speak on certain academic pr platforms. So I'm happy with what I've done. I've put it out there. People like you interrogate some of the things I say, and I respect you for that. That is the only way one can be on one's feet when it comes to these matters. Do you, do, don't but you think you've left the point, a bit late in terms no, no, of no, the no, campaign? No, 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 please. So, for me, mm. we know the delegates who are going to vote. Mm. My efforts are on those people who are going to vote, not on you who doesn't have any vote. <laughs> the party's regulations. I respect this party too much for mm. me to openly go against its regulations. So this is why you may not hear from but me. But your posters are everywhere. Well, I mean, that's a, a silent uh, campaign, isn't it? We went, to, we went on a heritage caravan <laughs> and almost every village, your posters were there. Yes, and it's telling you a story that we are with the delegates on the ground. That's what he's saying. Some of the polls points to Baumia Alan and then a couple mentioned Kennedy Japan. You see, I tomorrow I can do a poll and send it to you that Agoto is leading by seventy percent. Really? Oh yeah, these are all bots. I mean look, forget you about don't think these they are credible polls. No, 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 no. They are not. How many of the two hundred and ten thousand delegates who are going to decide who bears the flag of the MPP? How many of, of these are in the sample? They, they speak to MPP supporters. That I, no, no, I don't no, know if no, they are delegates. No, they speak to no, MPP no, no, not MPP supporters. Yeah. Look, how many MPP supporters? Are our, delegates not a, a microcosm of MPP supporters? No. They are not? No, no. In terms of what they think. They are the officers of the party. They are in charge of the party at the polling station, at the uh, 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 constituencies, at the region, at the national. They are officers elected by this party to take charge of it. So they have more responsibility. And they are, that's why the party has given them the power to choose who leads them. So those are the ones that you go and ask. If 210 and you have maybe 10% of them, then statistically it's significant to mm -hmm. say this. I mean, I could give money to anybody tomorrow to go out to mm -hmm. Makola and then come back to you and say, oh, I go to his leading. So yeah. those things, yeah, I don't think you should, like that I, you, should, you should give it that kind of... Uh, <laughs> well, I was just asking, I was just gauging your view on it. But apart from the Greek, I noticed you started your speech with the, the values your father inculcated in you. Yes. And your father is a very important person in Ghana's history, yes. National Celebration. Mm -hmm. Is that something you, you consider an advantage? I ask this because quite a number of the people in the race, it's mm -hmm. not official race, Mm -hmm. are from the Ashanti region, mm -hmm. or claim to mm -hmm. be from the Ashanti region. Right. So I, I get the sense from the outside that mm -hmm. being Ashanti will help in this race in a way. Or oh, the Ashanti region is important in the race. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. And it's a rhetorical question. Okay. Why is Ashanti the, the, the stronghold of the MPP? It's the biggest. Yes. It's a stronghold yes. by far. Yes. It's because of the seed my father sold on the 19th of September 1954. Mm. by founding and leading the National Liberation Movement. That's a historical fact. Mm. And that is why, that is where the support of the NPP is. That was the seed which was sown then. Would the delegates remember that? Well, or do they know this? Well, most of them may not remember. Yeah. But it's a question of education. It's the sad that Ghana's history is not told the way it is. It's so distorted and selective and all of that. It is for the party, the NPP, to teach our members the true story about the origins of this party. It's for us. Nobody will do it for you. So, so for those who know, that would give you a, 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 an advantage in a sense? Well, I hope so. Mm. And of course, you are from Mencia as well. Well, my father a is a servant of the Golden Stool. Wow. <laughs> that should count for something. Hopefully. I, I, I don't know. What, what about the, the, the incumbency of the vice president, though? Does that not worry you? No, he, he, not, he, not at all. You, you don't think that is an advantage? Well, what advantage does it give? 
He has the party, a lot of the party. he attends. He well, speaks at various yeah, platforms. Yeah, yeah, but that is, He's very visible. But that's national. Yes, yes, yes. But the party people, they know who, who is who. You know? The, the party people know who is who. You just have to make sure that they know that you are in the race. Mm. And for somebody... is talking about they know it because they, they are most of our delegates are rural people they benefited from planting for food and jobs they are part of the 1.7 million people that have benefited uh, farmers that have benefited from planting for food and jobs so they they relate to what i'm doing finally what about the view that if the vice president doesn't win it gives the ndc the a, a message to northern voters that it gives the, them a message that there's there's the MPP has not fielded a non account on their ticket ever. The same thing was said uh, at, at the, during the race for uh, 207 in Legon mm -hmm. that the Kufuado won. We went on the following uh, uh, election to win. So, so what is the political thing about it? I don't understand that argument. Mm. NPP is a national party. It's not an ethnic party. Mm. So if the, if the delegates decide who is competent in order to lead them, so what is this business about tribalism and all of that? Mm. I, I, find, I, I find it very, I can't understand it, to be honest with Will you. Will you be in the five for the super... Well, you go into a contest hoping to win. So right. I'm in the contest hoping to win. And mm. I know God will, will bless me to win this contest. For as long as you're in the race, we'll definitely talk to you. It's always good talking to you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And your availability to the media for scrutiny. Thank you. And you take it in good faith. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Ousufri Akoto is a former minister for a Greek. He is abiding by party rules. He will not do a false start. But he will be there, he believes, when the, when the final five, he will be there. And he's no shrinking violet. And his, the great Bafo Akuto's son, whose labor in 1954 led to the antecedents of what we now have as the MPP. So thank you for talking to us. We'll talk to him again. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you would learn something. Click and like and share the video on social media. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.